Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday chaired a meeting of the leaders of the Commonwealth of Independent States, a regional organization dominated by Russia. The leaders of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan and Armenia arrived in Moscow for the group's annual summit. Speaking at the meeting, Putin praised the CIS regional authority and stressed that all CIS states stand for the formation of a just world order based on the generally recognized principles of international law. Хотел бы отметить принимаемую нами сегодня программу сотрудничества в области дерадикализации, подготовленную по инициативе президента Узбекистана Шахвата Мирановича Мерзиёева. Она нацелена на недопущение легитимизации радикальных и экстремистских течений и на выстраивание межконфессионального диалога. В нынешней непростой ситуации в мире крайне важно, что все государства СНГ выступают за формирование справедливого мирового порядка на основе общепризнанных принципов международного права при центральной роли ООН. И до настройки национальных законодательств. Модельные зак... Например, ссылки на такие документы можно встретить в решениях... The aggression in the rhetoric of the Putin regime is growing. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council, the second person in the state, Dmitry Medvedev, has unleashed a new portion of threats and insults against unfriendly countries and their leaders. The post was published on his official Telegram channel. Medvedev spoke harshly about Latvia. He called the country non-existent and also wished its president Rinkovics serious injuries. The president of the non-existent country, Latvia, broke his arm. Too bad it wasn't his neck. We're waiting, wrote a representative of Putin's regime. In addition, he supported the scandalous idea of the president of the Russian Skiing Federation, Elena Vialby, to launch a missile strike on the center of London so that Russian athletes would be allowed to participate in international competitions. That's right, of course, but we need to solve the problem at its root and immediately sink the damned island of the Anglo-Saxons, Medvedev wrote. He also couldn't resist insulting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who announced some important decisions at the upcoming Ramstein meeting. Apparently, these words of the Ukrainian leader greatly alarmed the Kremlin. Medvedev has not forgotten the signature theme, nuclear threats. He threatens to hand over tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus and to set fire in Kyiv. Even Russian Z channels are openly laughing at Medvedev's new batch of threats. In particular, the ultra-right blogger Alex Parker returns, spoke out. He was outraged that the deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council is threatening to protect Belarus from Ukraine, while a significant part of Russia's territory in the Kursk region remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. I'm embarrassed to ask. But who should Russia turn to in order to use tactical nuclear weapons against the Ukrainians on the grounds that the war has already been transferred to the Kursk region? Wrote an angry ultra-patriot. Recall, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland will seek EU funding to build a network of bunkers, barriers, distribution lines and military warehouses along their borders with Russia and Belarus. The three Baltic countries who are all NATO members initially announced the plan for a Baltic defense line in January. Then in May, Poland announced a similar project called the Eastern Shield with a purpose to strengthen its borders with the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad and with Belarus. The need for a Baltic defense line stems from the security situation and supports NATO's new forward defense concept, Estonian Defense Minister Hanno Pevko said in a statement, adding that it is extremely important to coordinate our activities with Poland. As Russian President Vladimir Putin celebrated his 72nd birthday on October 7, Moscow residents have left sarcastic graffiti in the street, congratulating Putin in their own way. A video posted on local Telegram channels, showed three's graffiti painted on the walls in an unknown location in the capital Moscow. May your hands be broken, one of the graffiti reads. Happy birthday. 
May your legs stop working, reads another one. Happy birthday. May your ass explode, yet another graffiti reads. All three graffiti are in Russian. The author of the graffiti is unknown. Meanwhile, Putin received birthday greetings from his allies, such as Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, Chechen leader and warlord Ramzan Kadyrov, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. Putin's birthday was also in the center of media's attention. God save the Tsar, wrote ultranationalist Russian ideologue Alexander Dugin.